Hello everyone, my name is Dean Chessman and today I'm going to show you how to make this chromatic aberration effect. Uh, this effect right now is a part of one of the tools that I've made called my uh, Vintage Lens Tool. Uh, the tool is available to my Patreon supporters. Uh, you can check it out there. I'm going to show you today how to make it from scratch. Um, just to show you real quick some of the other features in this Vintage Lens Tool. This is the, with the chromatic aberration turned on, but I also have lens blur. Uh, you can see blurring the edges, how to add grain. It'll also do an RGB delay uh, and a, add a vignette. So if you want to learn more about this tool specifically, check it out on my Patreon page. I'll also be making another video going further into what exactly this does. All right, so let's get straight to it. I'm gonna delete this and show you how to make just the, just the chromatic aberration part of that tool. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna bring my video into a null just in case I want to replace it later. And then I'm going to split this out into my red, green, and blue values. I'm going to do that using a reorder. Uh, and I'm going to make these a 32-bit mono and copy it three times. And for, for these, I'm also going to label these uh, with a color. So I'm going to hit C to bring up my color, my color picker here, and then uh, pick colors to add those there. So. Uh, okay, so in my reorders, I need to select which which channels I'm going to be using for each, since these are just a single mono channel. Um, for the red, I'm only going to be bringing for, in, I'm only going to be using this top row. So input one, I'm going to select from the red. Uh, for my green one, I'm going to select from the green. For the blue one, I'm going to select from the blue. Great. And the way this chromatic aberration, the way chromatic aberration works is that, um, when you have a lens like a bad lens towards the edges the red and the blue will uh, be slowed down or sped up as they go through the lens um, to kind of illustrate this here's the, the wikipedia page you can kind of see here this when it when the edge of the lens hits or the colors hit these edges of the lens the blues get bent in more and the reds kind of stay bent out more and the greens are sort of this middle point so we're only going to be affecting the red and the blue for this and leave the green kind of as our center point um also this means to really to really uh simulate this effect i'm going to have it uh grow as or have it more effective as it gets to the edge of of the image so the way i'm going to do that is with a ramp and with a slope top so let's bring in our ramp and let's only set the resolution on that ramp and make it um let's make it circular and I'm going to do ease and ease out. I'm also going to, for the fit, I'm going to say fill. And then I'm going to hold the extend left. Okay. So now I've got my nice, nice ramp here. And I'm going to bring that into a slope. Now the slope is going to be the thing that I'm going to take those values to then bend out or displace the red and the red and the blue. And the slope will give me that sort of bi-directional, the X, Y, uh, the x y direction that a slope is facing so um, to visualize this better i'm going to hit a and n to bring up my normalized view okay and we'll see uh we'll see some banding there so i'm going to go in and uh up my my pixel format here i'm actually going to go up to a 32-bit mono for my ramp uh, but then for the slope i need that to be i need the red and the green values for my X and my Y values. So I'm gonna do 32-bit RG for this. And you'll see my green is blank, and that's because my slope is currently looking at the red and, or using red and blue as my output. But instead of that, I'm gonna change it so my green is the vertical luminance. And uh, okay, so this is what I want. So I've got my left to right slope and my red value, and my red value is my, my up and down and my green. And now the way that I want this to work, I don't want, I want my effect to be happening around the edge. So these values here, these gray values are actually um, not going to be, they don't have any slope, they're, they're flat. So I'm going to fix that by, um, by pushing my, by first of all, making a sort of flat spot in the middle by making the black, the black start in the middle of this. And, and you'll see here, like, this is where it actually starts sloping out. So I'm going to start by doing that, but then I'm also going to bring this period out. So that way my slope, I have pot, I have changing slope values going all the way to the edges. Okay, so 
Um, this means that my center of my image won't be as affected, but as I move outwards, these values will, will be affecting the, the chromatic aberration. Okay, uh, one more thing I want to do um, so that these values can go positive and negative to push all in the correct directions. I'm going to change my zero point for my slope to be zero. And yeah, okay, I think we're ready to start displacing these. So for my red value, let's take that into a displace. And I'm going to multiply this red value by my ramp. So let's add a multiply, bring in my slope, and then bring that into a displace. OK, and what are we seeing here? So if I normalize these values, I can see this is going to show the amounts that this should be displaced. OK, now in my displace, I need to update a few things here as well. So obviously, our vertical source is from green, not red. Uh, also, this is coming out as a 32-bit float, but now, um, no, actually, let's let's keep it at that because this is only going to be holding my red value, so that's fine. That it's just a mono. Um, our midpoint of our slope is not at 0.5; it's at zero, and our displace weight is at one right now. But let's make let's make a control for this because we're going to want to play with the the displacement amount. So let's go and make a constant. We'll say this is our displace amount. I'm going to go into a math and then into a null. And I'm going to I'm going to assign this to my displace weight here. And I'm going to change my math range from 0 to 1 to like 0 to 20. So we can really see the differences as we're making changes. OK, so um, let's go ahead, actually, look. And uh, well, first of all, I'm going to I'm going to take my constant and or not view, I'm going to say parameters so I can see this, have this sort of as a floating floating parameter at the top of my screen here. So I can change this no matter what I'm clicking on. All right, so as I change this displace amount, I should see this sort of warping happening around the edges. Okay, so it's pulling that red in. And as we saw from that Wikipedia page, the red actually, as I displace more, it should be pushed out. So for my red values, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to put them as negative. So now you'll see it's warping those values outwards. Okay, this doesn't make sense to you yet. Just hold on. We'll get to we'll get to where this makes sense in a second. So we need to duplicate this for our blue. That did not work. Copy and paste. There we go. And bring in our blue values. Okay, and then instead of negative for the displacement, I want that to be positive. Let's check how this is looking. Okay, that's bringing those inwards. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna to recreate our RGB image. We're gonna use another reorder, top, and bring our red values in first, our green values in second. And technically, I didn't need to separate out these green values. I could have just used the original image and pulled the green channel from that, but. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back to uh, let's go back to RGB and then say set our reorder. So our red input was input one, our green input is input two, our blue input is input three. And now let's see if we're getting getting our effect here. OK, so we can see we're getting a nice little fringe happening around the edges. The colors are pulling in. Oh, and actually, I do have it. I do have it opposite. So this displace the blues should be negative. And the red should be positive to get what I want. Let's go back and check again. I think that's because my slope values are reversed. But okay, so as I pull it in, my my blue values get pulled in. I should see my red values getting pulled out. Oh, that's what I messed up. I there we go. Now I'm seeing them both. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's a simple chromatic aberration effect. Like I said, this is a part of my vintage lens tool. So if you don't feel like building this yourself, or if you want to have some of the extra features that I built on top of this to get you sort of that vintage old lens look, you can check that out on my Patreon page. And uh, thanks for watching today.